Tonight, despite attempts to keep sex and violence off the streets and on television where it belongs, the producers of this show are forcing NBC to look back at Rowan and Martin's laugh-in. Before moving along, the whole gang wants to wish you Happy Valentine's Day. Mmm! Eagle deek, senor, a senorita. Today, the word is love. Ah, amour. <laughs> amour to jours. Tonight, for sure. <laughs> uh, mon coeur, se voit, te voir. Whatever that means, love. L U. The love. A great play. Did it this summer. Fantastic. Next week, we are going to be discussing kissing. <laughs> I kiss, you kiss, we kiss. Besseme. Besseme mucho. Guanda la quela sa donta mi colata. A tutelor, muchachos. Ciao. Next week, kiss. Speaking beauty. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you gonna marry me? No, I've got this weird thing for dwarfs. <laughs> Would you believe Mr. and Mrs. Jim Smith? We all miss you, and Mom misses you the most. Uh, you let her in here and we're through. <laughs> True love is finding a lipstick mark on your husband's shirt collar and then calling the laundress for an explanation. No, marriage is great. Gives a guy a nice, warm bed to go home to. Think his girlfriend is sick. Well, first of all, you realize you started off with a few problems. And now, from the transplant ward of the Burbank Lonely Hearts Club, NBC lovingly presents Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. Or is it laughingly presents Rowan and Martin's Love-In? Every network's entitled to one little mistake. You know, I like doing comedy, but just for a change, I decided to appear on Laugh-In. Down home, we watch Laugh-In in the barn. It gives the livestock a sense of superiority. Tonight, Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, a Valentine's Day special. Looks at love, sex, and marriage. Take my wife, please. Starring our cast of Crazy Valentines, the right on Dan Rowan, and the more on Dick Martin, plus Artie Johnson, Judy Carr, Ruth Buzzy, Henry Gibson, and Goldie Hawn, Dave Madden, Alan Seuss, and Joanne Worley, Chelsea Brown, and of course, Lily Tomlin, Teresa Graves, Dennis Allen, Barbara Sharma, Eileen Brennan, and yours truly, Gary Owen. If you want to go to heaven, you must restrain yourself from earthly pleasures. After you get to heaven, then you fool around. <laughs> you bet your sweet bippy. And tonight, some more special outtakes from Laugh-In's cutting room floor. You bet my sweet ass. This is the dirtiest show <laughs> I have ever been on in all of my life. If they want me to do this show again, they can kiss my ass. <clears throat> I think that would uh, probably come true. And despite the rumors you may have heard from the other networks, tonight's show is not a bomb. Uh, but seriously, folks, at this point, NBC had planned on showing some of its more stimulating commercials. However, it was decided there was already too much sex and violence on television, so here's Dan and Dick. Tonight, we're going to look at the battle of the sexes. Oh, wish I'd have got tickets for that. Who won? We're going to look at man and woman. Uh, I know which one I'm going to look at. All right, he said earnestly, uh, tell me, how do you look at women? Oh, sometimes like this, sometimes like that. Forty years married to the same woman. People say, how did you do it? Here's the secret. My wife and I go to dinner twice a week. A little candlelight, a little wine. She goes Tuesdays, I go Friday. I wonder which Henny Youngman they mean. We're going to examine the difference between man and woman. Now, what do you say to that? Vive la différence. Oh, oh, that Henny Youngman. We're going to strip away the pretensions and all the false fronts. Yeah, baby. And we're going to look at the bare facts. Yeah, baby. And the naked truth. And we'll all be better persons for it. Darling, when I meet your mother in England, 
Uh, do I curtsy before she faints or after she comes to? Tell me a little about yourself. I'm the detective your wife hired. <laughs> Roy, you want to talk about gripes? I'll tell you what really bugs me. It's all those pregnant women going around complaining. <laughs> Boy, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> There's been a great deal written in various periodicals about a new social phenomenon, wife swapping. Laughing now takes a concerned look at this hmm, questionable pastime. Hey, look, uh, nothing's happening here, gang. Uh, Dear, would you, how would you like to go bowling? No, no. How about a movie? Yeah, I'm tired of going to the movies. Yeah. Hey, listen, Ava, I got, I got a great idea. Listen, I mean, what do you say we really liven up the party? <laughs> All right? Yeah. By swapping wives. Hey, that's a great idea. What do we swap them for? <laughs> say more coolants. <laughs> Well, the way I understand it, everybody, all, all the guys take their car keys and throw them on the tables, and the wives get, grab each set, okay? Here you go. Go ahead. Okay. Come on, draw your three. Come on now, hurry up, will ya? Okay. I got mine. Okay. Okay. Come on. Uh, who's got who? Who's got who? Uh, 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 really? Yeah. Uh, 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 well, you ready to go? Sure. Okay, well, uh, would you like to go bowling? <laughs> but I don't understand why my shirt would attract more ships than your shirt. <laughs> uh, marriages are made in heaven. Maybe that's why so many atheists fool around. <laughs> Laugh-ins started at a time when the country had sit-ins, smoke-ins, love-ins. And other kinds of protests where people would arrive and usually not leave until they were thrown out. Every year, we look forward to a Valentine's Day celebration. That would be when they let us go a little further and... Talk about love, sex, marriage, and all those relationships that were just starting to come out of the closet. <laughs> well, actually, we were pretty tame. Well, at least I was. Not. <laughs> the title, Laugh In, made the network very nervous because they felt it might have a negative connotation since all of the other sit-in type events had been in the nature of a protest. They were right. NBC was shocked that Judy Carn didn't wear a bra. They would have had a heart attack if they knew she didn't wear pants either. In 1968 and 69, you couldn't show a pregnant woman and you couldn't use the word Sex. <laughs> we drove the censors crazy. Well, I have some good news and some bad news. First, I ran across the NBC censor last night. Now the good news. He didn't get my license number. <laughs> Folks out there in television land, moving right along now, we spotlight stars of tomorrow today. It's Laugh-In's new talent time. Fine, band sounds a little better. Sound like a couple of them started using both lips. That must be it. The drummer in. Yeah. Hey, got a surprise for you tonight. You got another goodie, huh? Oh, have I got a dandy. Uh, how'd you like to forget it? Oh, no. Wait till you see this yeah. surprise. Yeah, you've been trotting them out here week after week, and I'm getting You're a little leery. You're gonna little love it. You're gonna love it. Forget it. I'm leaving. You take over. Honest, you don't yep, want to see don't want any part oh, of it. Oh, you're gonna be sorry. Nope. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time anywhere, Laugh-In proudly presents Miss Inga Nielsen. Yeah. Another ding dong he dug this up. This is the ding dong. <laughs> well, I'm about to offer free room and board for a lifetime. <laughs> goodness. Hey, how, you know what she does? Uh, I don't care what she does. Yeah, oh, she does as well, too. Miss Nielsen happens to be the bugle instructor at the elementary school here in beautiful downtown Burbank. Well, Would no. you like to see her blow the bugle? <laughs> I should have known she blew bugle. Yeah. <laughs> she only has to breathe once a month. All right, now, <laughs> now, be that as it may, stepping into the lap in spotlight and filling it up to tippy top the fickle finger of fate points with pride to the lovely Inga Niels <laughs> great great oh beautiful <laughs> oh. Juilliard four years Juilliard. oh come on let's go for this now that's 
Sit down and rest your lips. Come on. Here come the quickie. It's National Quickie Week. Oops, you missed it. Oh, I love those quickies. Come in, the door's open. Mm. Mr. Runcorn? Oh, yeah. Yes. You uh, reported a crime? That's right, officer. Mm -hmm. While I was out bowling, somebody broke into the house. Blew open the safe, ransacked every room in the place, and stole my life savings, then left my wife like this. When this happen? A week ago, Monday. Smith, what can I do for you? I'd like some birth control pills, and please hurry. Would you sit there? Thank you. Oh, ah. Uh. Waiter, uh, yes. oh. There's a soup in my fly. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'll get it. All. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Charlie, this dame I met is really something. Uh huh. You know, five foot four, great figure, red hair, green eyes, cute freckles, a dimple in her chin. Good. Good heavens, that's my wife. No, oh, she's not my type, Charlie. This this one is is stupid and frigid. Good heavens, that's my wife. <laughs> do you, do you know that even the thought of lighting a cigarette frightens me? You mean you're afraid of smoking? No, I'm afraid of exploding. <laughs> I love I'm uh, hi. Uh, I'm I'm doing some research on uh, human sexuality, and I was wondering if you could help me. Well, why don't you come back around 5 o'clock when the library closes? I'll see what I can do. I brought you some tea, Peter. Oh, thanks, Alan. Oh. Oh. You see how you Americans get arrested for smoking this stuff. I can't even light it. Oh, hey, that's better, that's better. <laughs> hey, oh. Think about it. <laughs> it's mine, it's mine. Tell me a little about yourself. I'm 16. <laughs> hey, I just thought of a wild way to break the monotony. <laughs> The trouble with a lot of marriages is that after she says I do, she won't. You know, there's something about that, this magical laughing show, you know, that will always be. It was an incredible combination of talented people who worked in concert with each other. We had a ball. Just a marvelous time. I was truly thrilled with the job. It was the greatest three years of my life. I, I knew it then, uh, I know it now. Uh, there's nothing better than being a part of a family, uh, of no one holding, you know, the, the gold star. 
Everybody did their job. We laughed more than I've ever laughed on anything I've ever done. And, uh, and there was an, a kind of, kind of a wonderful socialism that actually worked uh, within that group, except for Dan and, and Dick, but you know, they, they only came in a couple hours a day. <laughs>
into the world of tomorrow <laughs> is for the news of the future. And <laughs> here's our head peerer, Don. That's Dan, Goldie. Are you sure? No, I'm Dan. Oh. Good name for the kid. 1988, 20 years from now, from her retreat in Lake Titicaca, aging actress Sophia Loren denied the rumor that she was retiring from show business because her career is sagging. <laughs> Miss, Miss Lauren announced that she opens next week as a go-go dancer in Sun City, where she will work under the name of Wrinkles Galore. <laughs> Future news, two years from now. Japan today made a devastating retaliation over the continued surcharge on their exports. When at dawn, four squadrons of Japanese jets sneaked under American radar defenses and dropped 600,000 transistor radios on Pearl Harbor. <laughs> finally, this item, 20 years from now, the Vatican City, 1988. The church today finally approved the use of the pill. The announcement was made by Pope Leroy Jr. His father was not available for comment. His mother, the former sister Mary Catherine, when contacted at Lux Hillside in the Catskills, would, would only say, we like to think of the pill as St. Joseph's aspirin for children. And now for the news of the past, laughing takes you back to the good old days of that fun-loving rascal, the flower of the marriage world, King Henry VIII. Oh. <laughs> we have a new game we play here at Windsor Castle, my dear. It's called Queen for a Day. <laughs> We interrupt this program to bring you a special report from our man in Southeast Asia. Thanks, Dan. Well, this has been a busy week, as you know. Prince Chow Lai met General Kam Buk Nook near Pan Moon Tang to discuss the Quan Chin Dang Nun infiltrations at Gung Du Pu. Sam Pullman Height! <laughs> Here is hockey pucks, bad boy himself. Here's Alan Seuss. Take it away, you Dresden hockey puck. <laughs> Big Al here on the old basketball diamond. Featurette. Oh, good heaven, someone's caught my tinkle. Again? Oh, oh, lock the doors and bar the windows. <laughs> There's a Tinkle Snatcher in our midst. <laughs> oh, well, the show must go on. Tinkle, how I do miss it. <gasps> I just returned from a hectic five days in Spain where I took part in the running of the bulls. Believe me, those bulls aren't running away. They're running around looking for people. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a hateful bull. <laughs> snort, snort. I had a narrow escape. I almost got gored in my Frioli. <laughs> Oh, the pain in Spain. I could help, big pal. I've got a wrinkle tinkle. <laughs> Ta-ta. I'm here with Jesse Rafer of the U.S. Olympic team. Jesse, I understand your appearance in the Olympics is rather significant. Uh, yes, that's, that's right. I'm the first Negro athlete the University of Mississippi has ever had on its track team. Well, that, that's wonderful. What is your specialty at Mississippi? I'm a javelin catcher. Tell me a little about yourself. I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Carter, but I'm not the type of girl who goes out with the first man who asks. <laughs> I've been married for 14 years, and believe me, it's just one big honeymoon right after the other. <laughs> Guess why? Because my hubby owns a motel in Burbank. Do you understand that? Ha, ha, ha.
By any chance, are you two ladies related? <laughs> By any, um, any chance, are you two ladies sisters? <laughs> Chance, are you two ladies brothers? <laughs> and now, more memories from Laugh-In's cutting room floor. Gordy, we got one more. We got one more. Okay. Oh, come on, old fella. Uh, we got to do one, one more. Act two. <laughs> A blister on your thing can be painful. <laughs> Only eight years old, but she stole my powerhouse. No, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Stole my power house. <laughs> 15A God. Library, Act Two. Unwrap that wall. <laughs> if he can't work with me, let him go somewhere else. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Laughing has been getting lots of... Oh, wow, why did you do that? You know, we had an agreement, remember? No more socket to me. <laughs> Listen, I said no more. This has been Laugh-In Request Time, a stroll down memory lane when none of us were dry behind the ears. <laughs> or in front of the ears. <laughs> Transcribe. Do you call yourself a Virginian? Where are you from? Buffalo. Buffalo? Well, that's in New York. Why do you call yourself the Virginian? Uh, I used to call myself the New Yorker, but some magazine made a big stink about it. I'm in the same trouble, too. I used to call myself the Saturday Evening Post. And now, folks, it's socket to me time. <laughs> Don't do it, Judy. We love you. Judy, don't do it. <laughs> I don't mind, fellas. You know me. Anything for the show, eh? You take Marie Antoinette now. There's a girl who used her head. Sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me. Sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me. Sock it to yourself. <laughs> People who have real talent and genuine charm are qualities you don't often see in show business. So in their place, we bring you Dan Rowan and Dick Martin. Hey, have you seen my Uncle Willard? Of course not. He's invisible. That was Uncle Willard. Yeah. Hey, by the way, how is he? Huh? Poor guy got fired last night. Gee, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, he was a bellhop at a honeymoon hotel. Probably made the brides nervous, huh? No, the bridegrooms. Oh? <laughs> How would you feel if an empty chair kept shouting, now let's get in there and win one for the old Gipper? Uh, <laughs> come on, you doo-doo, let's go to the party. Well, you've certainly convinced me, you sweet-talking son of a gun. Yeah. <laughs> come on, you're invited, too, if you want to go to a party with us. Thank you. is the opposite sex. How am I supposed to know, Miss Goldie? I've never been out with one. <laughs> Boris and I had a terrible weekend. We put an ad in an underground paper hoping to meet a couple of real <laughs> swingers and it was answered, my dears, by a trapeze artist and a gorilla. <laughs> Loved her, hated him. Boomer here. 
My girlfriend and I went to a nude sensitivity session where you talk with your body. Actually, I had very little to say. <laughs> My husband, Richard, has really settled down a lot since we've been married. Why, do you know that at our wedding rehearsal, he was so nervous he forgot to tip the bellboy? Oh. <laughs> I could have married anyone I pleased. So far, I haven't pleased anyone. <laughs> America's a uh, great country. You come it here, they give it to you free wine, clothing, apartment, and car. Really? That happened to you? No, my sister. <laughs> you can't buy true love for $1,000. Maybe 10 years ago, but not today. <laughs> If Rome continues its ban on the pill, in 15 years, there will be twice as many people protesting. Dick. Hmm? Give me two good reasons for nudity in the movies. Mmm, Raquel Welch. see-through blouse. Well, it seems a shame to spend so much for so little. I love everything about you, English, especially your muffins. <laughs> Thank you very much, my dear. I feel the same way about you. I just found out Adam and Eve were never married. Do you know what that makes all of us? <laughs> A lot of European women tell me American men make excellent marriage partners. But I would never marry them. <laughs> the new trend towards non-involvement can have very, very strange results. Well, I don't know, but... But I think the people in favor of a non-involvement policy for Americans are right. Oh, Wilbur, forget politics. Enjoy your vacation and stay. <laughs> Yeah, this one of the aces. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you going to do anything? Ignore him. We don't want any trouble. Just remember our policy is non-involvement. You'll produce something. Don't worry, he'll go away. Just act like he's not here. Oh. Oh. Oh, uh, Wilbur, did you write to your mother? Mother, mother. Oh, yes, yes, I wrote to my mother. <laughs> yeah. hey, did you send Aunt Harriet those beads? Oh, well, I've been so busy, I forgot. <laughs> you forgot? Uh, did you send Nellie the birthday card? <laughs> yes, with a picture of the bullfight on it. Oh, she'll like that. We've got to do something. Oh. As soon as they see you don't care and don't want to get involved, they'll go away. Oh, Hi, Trump. Don't say that to me, Desi. <laughs> well, see, I told you there's no trouble so long as you don't get involved. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, 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 a waiter. Uh, would you have that one patched up and sent to my room? <laughs> one ringy dingy. Two ringy dingies. A gracious good afternoon. This is Miss Tomlin of the telephone company. Have I reached the party to whom I am speaking? <laughs> Miss West? M M Miss May West? Miss West, we have a report filed with us that you are using an instrument which you've completely covered with cheap rhinestones. Now, Miss West, you must understand that the telephone company strictly prohibits the unauthorized modification of... <laughs> 
<laughs> Miss West, your telephone. <laughs> now, now, Miss West, Miss West, do you understand that your that that your telephone, your, Miss West, <laughs> is the property of the telephone company? Should you move, what on earth would we do with it? Pa pardon? Oh, Miss West, surely you must be joking. <laughs> As a devoted employee of the telephone company, I wouldn't dream of misusing. <laughs> Hello? 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 Mr. Peter Sellers, if you had a choice, what would you say would be um, your most favorite role? A blueberry muffin. <laughs> That's funny. I saw that one three times. <laughs> Besides being a fine actor, you're also an expert on art, aren't you? Yes, I am. And you know, your face reminds me of a Da Vinci. Oh, you mean his Mona Lisa. No, his brother, Giuseppe. Oh! <laughs> I know I should have brought him. Marriage is the only answer for girls who are too shy to adopt. <laughs> upset about it. My late night show is being continually interrupted by commercials, and I'd like to take this chance now to say... I was never so insulted in my life. I didn't come here to be grabbed. Me neither. I did. Tell me a little about yourself. My name is Harold. Harold, the name of love is following me to chase me everywhere. It's all over. Three hundred and forty-eight. Three hundred and forty-nine. I'm getting sick and tired of looking at coconuts. It's only a dollar for a kiss. How many were you thinking of? Here's two dollars. Forget you saw me. Here's the lady everybody's talking about. The one and only... The one and only? Miss Raquel Welch. Oh! There was a touch of sarcasm as he said, If Jaja Gabor married Minnie Haha, she'd be Jaja Haha. <laughs> you realize that if Old Mother Hubbard married Tommy Smothers, she'd be Old Mother Smothers? If Ida Lupino married Don Ho, she'd be Ida Ho. If Jack Lemon married Oliver Twist, he'd be Jack Lemon Twist. If Dean Martin married Frank Sinatra, It'd be a lot of talk. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, uh, I'd like to send this package to Joe Namath. Oh, well, that'll be a dollar, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alan Seuss! Meanwhile, over at ABC... Hi, folks, welcome to the Roxy. We got a jam-packed show tonight. In fact, I was just backstage packing the jam. Sing them right in there. I know you're out there. I can hear you breathing rather heavily. Seriously, folk, we got coming up on the bill. Dick, boom, boom, la touche. Hit it, maestro. Very interesting, but very provocative. 
Mr. Mastroianni, mm -hmm. I've always wondered, why are Italian men all such good lovers? Well, I am sure it's the spicy food. You see, after a big Italian dinner, we go, we go right to bed, uh, but uh, we, we can't sleep. And so it's just a question of uh, digestion. Three, two, one. Blast off! Well, here we go. First two men on the way to the moon. Boy, what a thrill. Hey, too bad Thompson got the measles. Had to be replaced. <laughs> Stroke of luck for you, though, huh? Gee, I almost forgot, the rush of getting off, we never really had a chance to meet, Captain. We're gonna be alone up here for the next three months. May as well get acquainted. My name's Major Robert Martin. Just call me Snooky. <laughs> dislike most about being a big star? Having to answer stupid questions about what I like most. How do you like being short? The computer dating company promised to find me a husband of equal interests and intelligence. You know, someone whose wheels turn like my own. <laughs> I remember when John Wayne, the big star, John Wayne, came. And John Wayne. John Wayne. Wayne. Kind of like you, only much more butch. <laughs> I mean, I'm much more butch than John Wayne? That's incredible. I never knew that. Well, let me That's tell my favorite fabulous. story. This is my favorite thing that oh, happened my on hand, my hand. This hand is so butch. <laughs> he took me by my my little waist and lifted me down onto the floor of the studio, just like the ladies got down out of butt horns years ago. And then hung off and decked you. <laughs> no, no, I decked him. <laughs> my favorite moment on laughing. Thank you. Next. My favorite moment had to do with General George Slaughter. Now, we, we all hear that LBJ, you know, was one of the most persuasive people in the world. But George, was really much more persuasive. I remember we were doing a scene with Jim Garner, and in the middle of the take, a, a little bird was supposed to pop out of the hat. And the bird tried to pop out of the hat on the trap door, and it got caught. And I looked at it, and I said to the camera, to George, it was in the control room, George, the bird is dead. <laughs> and George called down, He's just taking a nap. Keep rolling. <laughs> One egg bouillon for male si chong. I know. I mean, uh, one one male si chong for egg foo. <laughs> Young. No, no. Who's that? Uh, foo. <laughs> male si foo for you. Egg bouillon. A I don't know. Yes, ma'am, may I help you? Uh, yes, I'd, I'd like something in a hip hugger. Certainly, this way. <laughs> I'll take one. Well, I'll take the other three. <laughs> Pucker up, Johnny baby. Oh. <laughs> well, it's time to say goodnight, Dick. Good night, 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 Dick. <laughs> Say good night, Dick. Good night, Dick. My friend, who was a confirmed bachelor, suddenly got married. I asked him what got into him. He said, buckshot. Hey, Henry! Listen, Henry, you didn't use direct lines. Oh, yes, I did. Your cigarettes, now, how come you roll them now? Well, huh? 
Well, Answer me! <laughs> Henry! I... Don't be shy! I left my screwdriver in Cleveland! <laughs> and Joanne, is it you can't eat your cake and have it, or you can't have your cake and eat it? Oh, Peter! How should I know? I'm on a diet. <laughs> now that's a good imitation. What? <laughs> oh, oh, really? I have a good imitation. <laughs> hey, Goldie, my great grandfather was a centenarian. What? I say my great grandfather was a centenarian. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful, Goldie? My great grandfather was a centenarian. Hey, Goldie! Did you hear his great grandfather was a centenarian? Oh, hey, no kidding. Hey, Goldie! His great grandfather was a centenarian. I hope he lives to be a hundred. If we're so oversexed, how come we're still a minority group? Say to the girl with the bad knee. What did the chiropractor say to the girl with the bad knee? The chiropractor said to the girl with the bad knee, What's a rotten joint like this doing in a nice girl like you? What's a rotten joke like that doing in a nice joke wall like this? Hey, Joanne. Is that a dirty parakeet joke? Is this a take? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Help! Oh, so, uh, Lily. Do you know what a girl has to go through to get a mink coat? Oh, indeed, I do. The front door of Saks and the back door of Dick's steam room. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little early for that. Yeah. Uh, Artie, did you know that bank loan rate interest are sky high? I didn't understand the question. I said, I can't. 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 Could be the start of something big. Well, I'll say, if you don't put those things in your ears, I'm gonna call the police. <laughs> Did anyone ever tell you you were beautiful when you're angry? <laughs> what does that mean? Okay. You bet your sweet bippy. <laughs> okay. I bet my sweet bippy had lost it. <laughs> If you think that's something, you should hear what Bippy means in German. I'm really awfully sorry you're leaving us, Bunny Judy. It's going to be very difficult to find someone who can fill your shoes. Bet you sweet bunny. <laughs> what do you mean they said I was short? I pleaded with my agent about being on laugh here. And he finally got you on. Now he couldn't get me off. <laughs> you know... I watched the whole show, and I still don't get it. No, you never will. <laughs> the proceeding was recorded earlier because we were ashamed to do it now. Very interesting. I think that you are very interesting, too. <laughs>